Good evening and welcome to the 18WJTS newscast for Thursday, October 24th. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. I'm Jared Atkins reporting. On Wednesday afternoon, around 4.45 p.m. Central Standard Time, Indiana State Police arrested 65-year-old Duncan Mike Rance of Fort Branch after a criminal investigation revealed he allegedly molested two children under the age of 14. Indiana State Police Detective Tobias Odom initiated this investigation last week after receiving information from the victim's family. The alleged incidents occurred earlier this year. After reviewing this investigation, the Gibson County Prosecutor's Office filed criminal charges against Mike Rance and issued a felony warrant for his arrest. Indiana State Police and Fort Branch Police arrested Mike Rance at his home without incident. He was taken to the Gibson County Jail where he is currently being held without bond. Mike Rands is facing two level one felony counts of child molesting. The Jasper City Council met on Wednesday evening. Here are some of the focal points from that meeting. Kale Canise, the loss control director, presented details on his department and their work on legal and personnel safety matters. Six city ordinances were passed through this meeting. You can find descriptions of each ordinance on our website. Extensive discussion on the Northridge Estates Project residential TIF approval was had, where many council members were concerned on the tax rate increase that this would have on the housing project on residents of Jasper and Dubois County as a whole. There was no clear answer given to the issue of tax increase cost on a residential scale because there are too many factors to be considered in this early phase of the project. The first step of the process for addressing the indoor sporting complex development with the $45 million Regional Wellness Center was discussed. The city has asked for project proposals and received interest from five different developers and through the hand-picked steering committee for the Regional Wellness Project, they chose Crimp Construction as their primary developer. Now Hafer Design, the City of Jasper, Crimp Construction, and the Tri-County YMCA will all be working together to develop this long-awaited regional wellness center that has been planned since back in 2011. The Jasper City Council will convene again on Wednesday, November 20th at 5.30 p.m. at the Hall Council Chambers. And speaking of the regional wellness center, the Indiana Uplands Ready Steering Committee and Regional Opportunity Initiatives announced on Wednesday the allocation of $5 million in Ready 2.0 funding to support the development of the new Regional Wellness Center, marking the region's first investment through the Ready 2.0. Governor Holcomb established the now $1.25 billion Ready program three years ago. Ready 2.0, however, was part of the governor's 2023 Next Level Agenda and approved by the Indiana General Assembly that allocates another $500 million to regions across the state to accelerate shovel-ready programs in the state of Indiana. In Jasper, the $45 million Regional Wellness Center, including the $5 million Ready 2.0 allocation, will help address regional challenges related to quality of life, economic growth, child care capacity, and educational attainment. The new 90,000 square foot facility will be constructed on 10 acres adjacent to the parklands and the Jasper High School, with plans currently including a large fitness center, four full court gymnasiums, an indoor aquatic center, an indoor walking track, group exercise studios, community rooms, and a community kitchen. The new facility in Dubois County will be owned by the city of Jasper and operated by the Tri-County YMCA. Construction is expected to begin by summer of 2025, and the facility is planned to be open in the fall winter of 2027. For more information on Ready, you can visit their website at indianaready.com. The Dubois County Chamber of Commerce will host its annual luncheon and member celebration next Thursday, October 31st, at Clubhouse 61 in Jasper. The events scheduled from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. will highlight the Chamber's achievements over the past year and recognize outstanding local leaders and businesses through its annual awards ceremony. Bryce Morrison, co-founder of the ever-popular Mom Water, will be the featured speaker for the event. The Chamber will also present awards in three categories, Young Professional of the Year, Business Person of the Year, and Business of the Year. Nominees for the 2024 awards are as follows. Young Professional of the Year, Dustin Betts from Potoka Valley Career Tech, Andy Chin, Northeast New Boys High School, and Megan Durloff, Dove Recovery House. Business Person of the Year, Larry Carpenter from Carpenter Realty, excuse me, 
Claudia Juarez from Cafe Pina, and Devin Springston from Branded by Woods. And Business of the Year, Blesh Brothers, Premier Properties, Sultan's Run, and Ublord TV. For more information or how to become a member of the Dubois County Chamber of Commerce, you can visit their website. If you're unable to attend the event and have FOMO or fear of missing out, 18WJTS will broadcast the program on Wednesday, November 6th at 8 p.m. and again on Sunday, November 10th at 2 p.m. The Dubois County Highway Department will close 1st Street in Huntingburg on Monday, October 28th for a bridge deck replacement. This closure will take place at the intersection of 1st and Cherry Street near the entrance to Huntingburg League Stadium. The entrance to the stadium will remain open, however, and barring any unforeseen circumstances, this project is expected to last approximately four weeks. The Pike County Animal Welfare Shelter is facing a critical financial crisis despite ongoing fundraising efforts and monetary donations. The shelter, located in Petersburg, is reporting that it only has enough funds to remain operational for the next month, two at most. With costs continuing to exceed income, the shelter is urgently asking for help to keep its doors open and continue serving the animals of Pike County. Shelter staff have taken measures to cut costs but have been unable to meet the financial demands of maintaining their facility. Compounding the issue, the shelter currently houses more than double the number of animals it was designed to accommodate, with some having been in the shelter for nearly two years. The shelter is in desperate need of donations and adoptions. Donations can be made at the shelter or sent to P.O. Box 63, Petersburg, Indiana, 47567. The shelter also accepts Venmo and PayPal with links available in the comments section of their recent Facebook posts. Adoptions are equally important as the shelter currently cares for over 30 dogs in a space designed for only 19, along with many wonderful cats and kittens awaiting homes. For those interested in helping or adopting, please contact the Pike County Animal Shelter at 812-354-9894. The shelter is located at 4224 North Meridian Road in Petersburg. News out of Spencer County, Heritage Hills High School is inviting all local veterans to their annual Veterans Day program. Any veteran who is interested in coming and celebrating Ver Veterans Day excuse me, with the Patriots is encouraged to arrive at the Heritage Hills Patriots Hall, door number 7, and sign in at approximately 10.15 a.m. on Monday, November the 11th. After signing in, veterans are invited to sit in the seats of honor on the gym floor to be recognized by students and the community. The celebration begins promptly at 10.30 a.m. Veterans are encouraged to invite their families. All times listed, of course, are central standard. The City of Tell City, Indiana is organizing a fall junk drop-off event encouraging residents to help keep the city clean and beautiful. This initiative provides an excellent opportunity for residents to dispose of old furniture, mattresses, and similar items. The event will take place from October 28th to November 1st with hours of operation from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. The drop-off location will be at the Street Department Garage located at 1102 5th Street. This service is exclusively for Tell City residents and there is a fee of $10 per load. Please note the following items will not be accepted. Tires, hide beds carpet, paint cans, LP tanks, or any toxic materials. Additionally, items containing Freon, roofing materials, shingles, scrap wood, or other building materials are prohibited. As October brings cooler weather to the southern Indiana region, homeowners are urged to prepare their heating systems for winter. Failing to conduct maintenance checks on heating sources, whether gas, electric, propane, or wood burning, can lead to serious safety risks, including carbon monoxide poisoning and increased fire hazards. Heating equipment is responsible for approximately 49,000 plus fires in the United States every year, according to the U.S. Fire Administration. Homeowners can save up to 30% on heating costs by ensuring their systems are efficient and well-maintained. It's essential to schedule a professional inspection, test carbon monoxide detectors, and clean wood-burning appliances. By taking these steps, homeowners can ensure their systems operate safely and efficiently throughout the winter months. For more details, please visit our website. And that wraps up your news here on 18WJTS. Your weather is coming up next.